After removing your whole front bumper, the first thing you want to do, there's going to be a couple clips along the backside. I believe this is a nice big fat wire harness they got looped through here. There's a couple clips right here. You'll see them. They are tree style clips. You got to pull these out. You can use a screwdriver, you can use a um, finishing tool, etc. But the important one is you'll notice in the front of the vehicle, there's an air sensor. And right back here, straight in the back, and again, the camera's, let's see if I can see back here. There's the clip that holds that, and the camera's going crazy. But there's a clip back here that you have to pry out. If you don't disconnect that, you're going to have problems. So make sure to pull that clip again. It's another tree clip, you got to pull it out. So Mike here is going to show you, you do have to remove the air sensor and the bracket. The air sensor is mounted to a plastic bracket that's hanging it down. Go ahead and pull it off. Again, there are tree style clips holding it in place. Pulls right on off. And again, tree, tree style clip holding that in place. Good to go. This is the titanium one. This we, uh, we offer in the titanium with the titanium shafted tow hook. Normally it's going to be a steel one. It's the same thing except the steel one will have a little different uh, coupling nut here. But this one's the one we make. We're going to put on this car. And I've already installed this. It's going to come separate. I've installed it. If it's not a titanium one, you're going to use two washers in the front to space this forward a little bit. But this one's already in a neutral position because this is adjustable. So this one's ready to go. I got it all ready to go on here. Before we get the bracket installed, we're gonna to wanna to take off these two 13 millimeter nuts. They're sitting behind the radiator support bracket. There's two of them, one on top of each other. Deep socket because the, the studs stick out of the bolt. And I'm tightening it, so that's the wrong way. Now we're going to push this upper radiator support bracket. We're going to push it behind the studs, out of the way, and then we're going to actually install the bracket in between. We're going to want to slide the bracket in from the bottom, between the harness and between the wire, and through the rubber grommet that forces the air into the radiator. You're also going to want to, it's kind of tricky the way you do it, but slide the bracket in those holes sit right in there against the crash bar like that. Next we're going to want to go from the outside and unscrew these big bolts holding the crash bar on and that's going to allow us room to put the bracket back in place and we'll screw this back on. So at this point he's loosening up the two front bolts so it's easy to get the crash bar back on so that way you don't have to apply pressure to push it back further and then uh, we'll tighten everything back up put the nuts back on and then get everything back in place. So again, when you put that plate, when you put our receiver in, again, remember we remove the wire holding this sensor. The primary reason is you don't want the wire to be stuck in between this plate and the crash bar. You wanna make sure it goes on the back side. So verify that wire's in the right place before you tighten everything down. So one step you wanna do when you get to this point after the bolts are tightened down, you wanna do a test fit with the bumper back on the car. see that it has to come up a little bit so that's easy to do we're gonna take it back off we only have to do this once so now we know it goes so when installing it there's gonna be a little bit of play in the bracket so you can move it around so as you saw we just test fit we realize it needs to come up just a little bit and that way I'll allow our tow hook to actually up. go right into the receiver so the other side of it is on the mount, there is a little bit of play here. You can loosen, loosen this bolt on the back side, and you can move it up and down a little bit to make sure the fitment is perfect. You should not have to drill or cut your grill to make this fit. You just have to align it perfectly so the shaft lines up with the opening in your grill. Ready? So on this, the sensor, once our plate's in there, that is gonna cover the hole it mounted to. You can zip tie it, and what I did is I tucked it in and made sure it was tight back in there so it's not gonna flop around. Uh, but you can see with the final product with the sensor back in place and the receiver in place. Yeah. Now we have the front end back on and now you can see the receiver lines right up to where we can put the shaft into right the honeycomb grill. I suggest you should, you should uh, hog it out a little bit because if you hit something here, it comes up and wants to break the grill. 
that's why I would hog that out a little bit. Okay, now there's a very important what? step we're going to do, and you put because normally we use this to lock it to make the D-ring straight. Well, we can't put this in there, obviously, so we recommend you just use some blue Loctite. But I knew I couldn't. Look at those skin marks from the cup cars going up to the wall. Now make sure you tighten this because this will unscrew and fall off like offers. <laughs> so <laughs> like I get an Allen. Uh, 5 sixteenths. There you go. And then that'll tighten up right there and it'll be like a lock nut once, uh, like a nylock.